All right, guys, so we're going to be talking about increasing and decreasing functions. So if you see a big smile on my face, there's a class behind me. I'm, I'm covering a class for Mr. Munga. All right, so increasing and decreasing functions. I'm going to throw the definition at you, but the definition is a lot more complicated than what it actually is. It says if a function is increasing on an open interval i, okay, and if for any choice of x1 and x2 in that interval, x1 is less than x2, then the output of x1 has to be less than the output of x2. And so what this means, if you look on some interval and you move from left to right, is you increase your x values, your y values should increase. That's all it's really saying, is I read a graph like you read a book from left to right, and if x is increasing and your y values are increasing, then you know the function's increasing. So that's the definition of what it means to increase. If you think of a picture here, uh, and we have this function, if I pick a point here, x1, and then I pick another point, x2, okay, you can see the output of x2 is greater than x1. So if x1 is smaller, the output better be smaller than x2, uh, x2's output. So that's the idea of increasing function. As the x values increase from left to right, your y values will increase from left to right, and to the right they should be larger than they, what they were from the left. Same idea goes for decreasing functions, except the big thing here is if you pick your x, if your x is less than y, your first value is going to be larger than your second value. So if you think of a function, okay, and we have some function going down, and we pick a point here and a point here, we can see that x1 is smaller than x2, but the output of x1 is larger than the output of x2. And that's how you know the function's decreasing. And if you look from left to right, the function should be going down. The y value should be getting smaller as your x values are, are getting larger. And that's a decreasing function. So what we're going to look at here is several examples, and we're going to try to identify where the function is increasing and decreasing. And then we're going to state those intervals uh, using interval notation. It's important to remember Quinn, that's funny, uh, that it's an open interval. Okay, so we're not closed. So when we look at our interval, it's going to be uh, open circles or parentheses when we talk about interval notation. So we look at this first example, and it's some function. And we want to know where is the function increasing, decreasing, and where the function is constant. Okay, so it's important to realize when we talk about interval notation with respect to increasing and decreasing, we're still looking at x values. We're not going to be looking at y values. So I look at my function and I see I, I'm going to start at negative 6 here along the x and I can see that the graph is falling. Okay, So that's going to tell me the function's decreasing. So I'm going to start where the function's increasing and I look at negative 4 here, 1, 2, 3, 4 along the x and I see that the function's moving upward as I move right. So from left to right, the y values are increasing, and they continue to increase all the way to when x is 0. Okay, So our increasing notation would be from negative 4 to 0. That's where the function's increasing, and these represent the x values. From negative 4 all the way to 0, we increase. Decreasing. Where does the function fall when we go left to right? And when we go from left to right of negative 6, we see the function falling all the way to negative 4, and it stops. Okay, so from negative 6 to negative 4, that's our first spot of decrease. And we also see we're falling, if we look at 1, 2, 3 on the x and go up, and the graph is falling as we move to the right. So that's the other place where we're decreasing. So in, we have union with 3 to 6. So these are our x values of where we decrease from negative 6 to 4, and then from 3 to 6, we have a decreasing function. So when it's more than one place you're decreasing, make sure you have the union sign. Constant is when there's no change. As we increase x, so as x gets bigger, the y value does not change. And we see from 0 to 3 on that interval, okay, there's no change in y. So what we have here, remember, is that open interval. Notice how everything's in parentheses because we're talking about in between those points. And that's what we mean by open interval. So that's where the function increases, decreases, and where we see constant, uh, a constant part of that function. And let's look at two more examples. Here we're looking at part of the cosine function. So again, we want to know what are the intervals at which the function is increasing and decreasing. I'm not going to put constant here because I don't see anything flat on the graph. 
So let's look. The, the domain here, we're going from negative pi to pi. So I'm going to start on the left. Again, I like to start on the left here and kind of read like a book going left to right. So at negative pi, I see as I increase my value of x, my function also increases. So that's where the function is increasing. As x gets larger, y gets larger. And that goes all the way until x is 0. OK, and then we stop. So the interval is increasing from negative pi to 0. So be careful. It's negative pi to 0. Don't look up here and say negative pi to 1. This is the y value. OK, we're looking at x. So x goes increasing all the way from negative pi to 0 and stops. And the decreasing portion is from 0 to pi. And so we have 0 to pi where the function is decreasing. Last example here. Again, list the intervals on which the uh, function f is increasing. And two, list the intervals at which the function is decreasing. And we call this guy, this graph here in red, is f. OK, so look from left to right. I'm going to start way over here. and. We see the last point I see here, it looks like from negative infinity all the way down to negative 1, we're going to have that decrease. So notice on the decreasing part, I have negative infinity to negative 1. But that's not the only spot where I see a decrease. I also have in union with 1 to 3. And if I look at the interval from 1 to 3, as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. So that is a decreasing portion right there. So we also include that on decreasing. Increasing portion, where does this function increase? Where do we see when y gets bigger and uh, when x gets bigger, y gets bigger? We see that here from negative 1 to 1. In union, when we get to 3, we see that graph shoot up to infinity. So our function increases from negative 1 to 1 in union with 3 to infinity. Those are the intervals of increasing. So that's increasing and decreasing functions. Remember, when you look at that, the increasing function, you have both y and x increasing at the same time. Decreasing, you have x getting larger, y getting smaller. We use interval notation to represent that. And everything, the range is always in between. The interval is always in between. So we're always using parentheses. There's not going to be brackets when we talk about increasing and decreasing functions. If you have any questions or comments, you can type them below or email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov.